Welcome to Christmas Eve. My name is Brett Lilly and I'm the lead pastor here at New Life and I want to thank you for joining us this evening. You know, Christmas Eve is one of my favorite services. I absolutely love this service. In fact, there's a couple of them throughout the year that I really look forward to and this is one of them. But you may be sitting there wherever you've joined us from this evening going, but Brett, this year is different. You're right, it is different. And in fact, there really hasn't been anything about this year that's been normal. And you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's been a year for the ages, and yet it's still a year that we can get excited coming to Christmas Eve. And so, as it is different, wherever you may be watching us, joining us from wherever you are this evening, we're going to keep it as familiar as we possibly can. It's going to be very similar to what we've done before, so we can make it feel like normal. And so I guarantee you this evening that if you've been here before, it will feel like Christmas Eve. But maybe you're new this evening, you're joining us for the very first time, and you don't even know what Christmas Eve feels like. Well, I can almost guarantee that you too will enjoy this evening. One of the things that's enjoyable about tonight is that at the very end of the service, we sing Silent Night, and we light candles. And so I'm going to ask you right now to grab a candle, grab one somewhere within your house, take a little bit of time here, take a second to go get a candle, and light it with us at the end of the service, because as we get through this evening, our hope is to remember that Jesus is the light of the world. And that's one of my favorite parts of the evening. So turn your lights down low wherever you are right now, grab a candle, and join us for Christmas Eve this year where we can still be excited that Jesus is the hope of the world. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you this evening that we can come before you. In a year that may be different than other years before, but a year where we can still be excited that it's Christmas Eve. So I pray, Lord, wherever we are this evening, that you will be there with us. That as we come to Christmas Eve to remember that you came to this earth, that you will be with us and remind us what this season is all about. And that through this year, Lord, my prayer is that we've seen you more clearly and that as we're here right now, that we can see exactly what you've done through this year and remember what you're gonna continue to do as we get excited about the fact that you came, that you loved us, that you know us, and that you're right here with us. So Lord, give us a great evening as we celebrate your birth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. Please rise as we celebrate the fact that Christ is born.
So Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, 6, and 7 says this, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Please rise. Our Lord fulfills his promises. He sent his son to dwell among us, giving joy to the world. Joy to the world. in Luke 1, verse 26 through 35. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and you will give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God.
This is Luke 2, verses 1 through 14. It says this, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Please rise.
reading is Matthew 2, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw this star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
So our journey this far has brought us to this point. Through the month of December, we've been talking about hope, and through our story this evening, it's brought us to this place, to a manger, to a stable, a place that nobody expected, a place that we've come looking for something, looking for hope, looking for excitement, looking for something that we never thought would be right here. And yet, here it is. In fact, we found it. We found hope. And hope has a name. See, Matthew tells us in Matthew chapter 1 that this person who is here in the manger, in this stable, has a name. And it's a very special name. In Matthew 1, 20 through 21, it says, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. See, his name was so special that an angel came and delivered it. An angel came to Joseph who was sitting there going, I don't know if this is the situation I should be in. See, his fiance was pregnant, miraculously pregnant. But he was wondering, should he continue forward? Should he move on? Should he stay in this place? Or should he walk away? An angel comes to him and says, no, in fact, The baby that Mary is carrying is so important that you need to name him Jesus. See, that name is significant. Jesus, Yeshua, Joshua. It's a form of Joshua, which would have hinted at the fact that Joshua, who had been a leader of his people, was representative of the one that was coming. See, Joshua had been a mighty leader. He'd been a mighty warrior. He has led his people into the promised land. See, Moses had brought them out of Egypt, leader of the Israelites. Moses had brought them out of Egypt into the desert, and they'd wandered for a long time. And then came Joshua. And Joshua had been hand-selected by God himself to be the one to take over for Moses and lead his people into the promised land. And they'd fight many battles, and there'd be many hardships. And yet Joshua had been prepared for that moment to be a mighty warrior, to be victorious, to lead his people to freedom. The same could be said of this little one now. Jesus, Yeshua. See, Jesus, too, would be a mighty warrior. He, too, was hand-selected by God at the right moment to be the leader that everybody was looking for, to lead his people to freedom. But see, Jesus would do it a little bit different than Joshua did. Jesus wasn't going to fight battles here on this earth. He wasn't going to fight physical battles. It wasn't going to be flesh and blood, but rather, Jesus had come to fight a spiritual battle. Because what this angel told Joseph, he went on to say, you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. See, Jesus was going to fight the ultimate battle. He was going to fight the battle that nobody else could fight and win the victory that nobody else would be victorious in, which is why hope has a name. 
See, Jesus would save his people from their sin, which was a big deal because there was this thing called sin that had created a chasm. It had caused people to be far from God. It had been this thing that had caused a separation. In fact, the separation was so great, it was greater than the separation between me and you. I don't know where you are today. I don't know where you're at. I know you're not here. And I know that there is a distance between us. It could be maybe a mile. It could be 20 miles. It could be thousands of miles. You could be in a completely different country right now. There's a huge distance between me and you. See, the same was true for each and every one of us. Sin had caused a distance to grow between us and God. And so God did something that nobody else could do. He came to this earth. He came born in a place nobody expected with a name that tells us that the Lord is salvation. See, Jesus fought the battle for us. Jesus came, God himself, to this earth to do something that none of us could do. Hope had come, and his name was Jesus. And hope grew older, and he walked with us, and he experienced what we experience. He knows what it's like to live on this earth, and he went to the cross, and he died, and he took the sins of the world there, and he said, I will be victorious. And he won the greatest battle ever fought. He won the victory over sin and death and led through that his people to the promised land. See, the hope that we have in this man named Jesus is that he did something that Joshua could never do. See, Joshua led his people into the promised land. He led them into freedom, yet Jesus frees us from our sins and leads us into the true promised land. See, Jesus promised that if you follow me, I will lead you to paradise that in my name, for there is no other name written among men under heaven by which you must be saved. But if you believe in me, you will have eternal life. And that is the greatest news that's ever been proclaimed. And here's the ultimate beauty of it is it's a gift. It's free for each and every one of us that Jesus came in a manger as the hope of all nations. He says, what I have, I give to you for free. That's why Christmas Eve is so beautiful. That's why Christmas Eve is one of my favorite services because it reminds us that Jesus, the light of the world, has come to this earth to give us an opportunity to spend eternity with him. And so as we stand here towards the end of 2020, with things behind us now that we look back on going, oh man, this was a tough year. As many of us this evening might be sitting here hopeless I can tell you that hope has a name and it's Jesus and that hope has come and he's the light of the world. And we remember that on Christmas Eve and we understand that if we believe in the name of Jesus that he has promised us eternal life and that gift is free, the greatest gift ever given. You can have it too. Maybe this evening you don't have the hope in Jesus that you wish you had. Maybe this evening you have not taken the gift that he has given us. And so I would encourage you, the Bible tells us, if you believe in your heart and proclaim with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. And that is worth celebrating on Christmas Eve. Jesus is the light of the world, the hope of all nations. And so at the beginning of the service, I encourage you to grab a candle. This is the time that I'd ask you to take it out that you would light that candle, that you would remember who Jesus is. The reason we come on Christmas Eve is so that we can celebrate that he came to this earth. And so as we light those candles, as we hold them, I encourage you through this last song to maybe for the very first time put your faith in the only hope that we have. If it's not the very first time, I'd still encourage you to do the same. Put your hope and your faith in the only one worth hoping in. And as you light that candle, remember why we come on Christmas Eve. And then Jesus said that that light is in us and we then are the light of the world. 
And so as we sing this last song, as we hold that candle, as we understand that hope had a name, that hope has come, that we know that we have hope. And that we have the opportunity to spread that hope to as many people as we come in contact with. Until the day that Jesus promised that he will return. And so as we sing Silent Night, as we finish this evening, Let's remember that Jesus is the light of the world and that through us, the whole world can see him. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the opportunity to come here and to remember that you are the light of the world, that you are the hope of the nations, that you are the only place that we should put our hope. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have every Christmas Eve to come here and remember that. To an unexpected place, to a stable where there's a manger. And yet in that manger is a king. One who came to set his people free from their sins and lead us into the promised land. And so we thank you for that reminder this evening. We thank you for the opportunity we have on Christmas Eve to celebrate. And we pray then that the hope of the world in us, Jesus, the light of the world will shine brightly through us so the whole world can see him. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand together and let's sing. candles lit as a reminder that Jesus is the light of the world. We can go into Christmas tomorrow and into 2021 knowing that there's hope. 
that the light has come and he's shone through the darkness. And that he has taken our dead and darkened spirits and he has made them alive. And that in us, the light now shines. The light of his glory that lights the whole world. And so wherever you're at this evening, whether you're here, near or far, may this candle be a reminder that the light of the world has come. That he will continue to be the light of the world no matter what happens. That he's given us the ability to show the world who he is through us as we then light up the world. So take your candles and raise them up. Look at the ones next to you. And remember who Jesus is and what he's done and the hope that he is now and for all eternity. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much for who you are. Lord, we bask in your glory, in your light as you shine bright for all the world to see. And this Christmas Eve, may we remember the true message of Christmas. That the hope of the world, the light of the world, has come here to be with us. And that we may know him for all eternity. So I pray, Lord, that as we remember him, as we remember who he is, that we then will be people who shine bright for him. So when the world sees us, Jesus, they see you through us. We thank you. We praise you. We give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a Merry Christmas.